Wow, this is great, and this is a very random video coming from me. Now that the decade is over and I am a weeb, I thought, why not look back and see what were my favorite anime of the past few years? Now, I only pick one per year, because if not, this would be a very long list. And let's just not, okay? For 2010, I decided on the world God only knows, and it's not only my favorite anime of that year, but of all time. So I'm pretty sure I didn't actually watch it until 2011, but anyway. This year's isn't what you would call groundbreaking, but it has a really special place in my heart. It has amazing voice acting, especially by Hiroshi Mono, and if you don't know him, you really need to go watch more anime. It also has amazing music, like insert songs, that are probably the best. And don't get me started on those openings, because all three of them are amazing. You would listen to them over and over, at least I do. One of the main reasons I like this anime is the main character, Katsuragi. He is sweet, he's smart, well he doesn't start out sweet, but he's very smart. He hates the real world, he would rather spend his days playing video games, and I mean, I understand that, but throughout the series, he comes to accept that the real world, though imperfect, it's still beautiful in its own way. 2011 got dark fast with Madoka Magica. Back in high school, the girls at the anime club, myself included, were obsessed with it. The cute art style, the amazing OST by Yugi Kajiura, and it also had great music by... What's their name? Galafina. Yeah, they're amazing too. Go check them out. And it was fitting our Maho Shoujo hole left by Sailor Moon when we were kids. As a teen, we also thought it was amazing how the story took a really, really dark turn for the worst, I guess. I remember as a kid, I would play Sailor Moon, and I would be like... Moon Prisma Power! Wake up! Yeah, would never play Madoka Magica, ever. 2012. Now this is when it starts getting harder. I was watching a lot more anime, and I loved a lot of them. But in the end, Mysterious Girlfriend X takes the spot. This series is hilarious and cute, and probably the main reason why I remember it is the dream theme. It still hunts me in my dreams, in a good way. Tsubaki, the main protagonist, is adorable, and it's just so beautiful to see how him and his mysterious girlfriend come to understand each other throughout the series, though it's mostly the girlfriend, Urabe, who gets her way done. Years later, this series is still as beautiful as it was back then. Days confusion every come through my heart If you know that song, then you already know my pick for 2013 is none other than Free, the Watobi Zoom Club. Now, a lot of people like it because of all the ships you can make and whatever, but I really just enjoy the characters' friendship and how they come together. Hashtag friendship goals. I always loved this series, and I never really had anyone to talk with about. My friends all thought it was weird uh, to see a bunch of half-naked guys. But I mean, I'm pretty sure they've seen worse. It was... I remember it being absolutely beautiful, like any other work by Kyoani. Just the year before, they had Hyoka come out, and I also loved that series. And if you remember it... They, it was a huge deal with the water animation, and honestly, the character design swirls amazing. They were all husband materials, and Go was... was her name Go? Yeah, her name was Go. She was also waifu material, but I'm not going into that territory because husband does for me. Yeah. 2014, Haikyuu. Now, we're starting to see a pattern here. When I was young, I would watch Captain Tsubasa, and I freaking loved it. Even though I don't really like soccer and playing it, I would get kicked, and I would and I wouldn't kick the ball either. I suck at sports. Anyway, maybe that's why I fell in love with Haikyuu at first sight. The animation was amazing. The character dynamics were so refined. Hinata was just adorable, and even to this day, I just want to support Karasuno whenever I watch this series. No kidding. I'll be shouting, "Gambare!" or. Ike Karasuno! I just get so into it whenever I watch a match, even if it's a practice one, and now with a new season on its way, oh boy, I might lose my voice. 
in 2015 came out a gem, which I don't think gets as much love as it should, other than the lovey the ending song gets, but mm, yeah, not enough. That is Kekai Sensen, or Blood Blockade Battlefront, but I never call it that. Its Japanese name is a lot easier. Coming into this series, I thought it was going to be super serious. Heck, everything about it shouts blood and life risk in situations. And while that's true, it's also pure comedy. And I know I mentioned music as something I like for every other anime in this list, but Taisei Iwasaki is an amazing composer. The OST doesn't even sound like your usual OST. You could really listen to these songs and sing your heart out. At least I do. 2016 was full of series I absolutely loved, but in the end, Pokesuit and World takes the prize. This series is just so wholesome and adorable, and personally, it made me reflect a lot on life. The main reason why this is my top anime from 2016 is because it saved me from the disappointment that was Yuri and I. To me, anyway. Totally understand if you like it. But I was just so upset with it, and as I was ready to just give up hope on humanity, Poco came and saved me from the pits of despair with tenderness and warm colors. I'd love to read the manga, and since Poco is a boy, it might not have a terrible ending like a soggy drop, if you know what that is about. Hopefully you don't know how that ends. For 2017, Beauty and the Beast, uh, I mean, Mahotsukai no Yome, or the ancient Magus Bride. And this year's was a keeper from the moment I heard the opening. It came out so strong, and it ended strong. All the characters are likable, except for that creepy spirit that was gonna kidnap the kid because he's he had a fight with his sister and wished they never had a sibling or whatever. But other than him, even the main villain is rather enjoyable. Then there's a dynamic between Chise and Elias. Forget Beauty and the Beast, this is way better. They're just so cute. Elias, while not understanding humanity all that well, comes to truly care for Chise, and that just warms my heart. We're almost at the end here, and for 2018, I just had to go with Run with the Wind! Totally copying Christmas Nats there, or at least trying to. Another sports anime, what a surprise! No, but really, the only thing I didn't really like about it was the second opening. Other than that, it was absolutely amazing, from start to finish. Would totally watch it again. Out of all the guys, my favorite one was Prince, because he's never done sports in his life, but even then he pulled through. It was also refreshing to see an anime set on university, and not in high school, like every other sports anime there. But before we go to that last one, here are some honorable mentions. Psyche K. Real life. Agent. Children of the Wills. Rising of the Shield Hero. And last but not least, 2019. Last year was just full of great anime. Dororo, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Dr. Stone, but my pick has to be The Promised Neverland. I was reading the manga even before the anime was announced. And at that time, I really feared for it because I didn't know how well it would translate to anime. But boy, did they surprise me. I can say the anime is as good as a manga, but it really is great. And I'm still trying to convince my brother to watch it with me. There's Overworld with the opening. Just, just mind-blowing. Can't wait for the season 2. I hope it comes this year. I know this is pretty new for me, and I also apologize for my accent. But if you like this video, make sure to leave a comment, a like, subscribe, share with your friends. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful new year.